Welcome. Part four of What's on My Walls as we move from the dining room, you may remember this if you were part of part one, to the entrance hall and with Fredo Lam. This is Untitled from 1944. Lam is Cuban, born in 1902, showing an early talent for art, and by the age of 21, he wins a scholarship in Cuba and goes to Spain, which is only supposed to be for a short period of time. He ends up spending 14 years there. In 1936, he joins the Republicans in the new Spanish Civil War, but by 1938, the Franco forces are winning and he and some others flee to Paris. But he has in hand a letter of introduction to Pablo Picasso and they become great friends. The downside of this is that Lom's work all through this period, 38, 39, 1940, seems to just replicate what Picasso is doing. Critics agree if he'd stayed on that track, it was a one-way ticket to oblivion. But when World War II breaks out, he and some writers and artists are forced to flee the oncoming Nazis. They run down to the south of France, Marseille, and they sit there for weeks waiting for a ship that'll get them out, which eventually it does, to first the Caribbean and then no great leap to Cuba. And now Lam is home. And all of a sudden he has a, an artistic epiphany all around him are the remnants of African culture, the religion of Santeria, spirits, Cuban folklore, and he takes a fresh inspiration from all of that, and it all lands here. And this, the critics agree, begins his golden age, which lasts all the way to his death in 1982. And at first, after his passing, his work begins to fade away until the turn into the 21st century. And all of a sudden, Wifred Olam is rediscovered, leading to a major tour in 2015, 16, and 17 through the major art museums of the world. The Centre Pompidou in Paris, Tate Modern in London, Raina Sofia in Madrid. Wifred Olam, untitled from 1944. Now just around the corner in the master bedroom is Antonio Gattorno's Portuguese Concidado which translates to Portuguese guy, citizen, peasant, take your pick. What caught my eye the first time I looked at this, it was spot on early 1920s Picasso. And here is the comparison. You can see what I was seeing. And that led to learning all about Antonio Gattorno. Antonio too is Cuban, born in 1904, a child prodigy as far as art is concerned. At the age of 15, he paints this called Dolores and it wins him a five-year scholarship in Paris. He ends up spending seven years in Paris, and when he returns to Cuba in 1926, he paints this, and it's the only existing photograph of this piece which was in color, and this painting sat in storage at the Museum of Fine Arts in Havana and deteriorated beyond repair. So the painting no longer exists, and this is the only photograph of it. Pivotal moment for Antonio Cotorno comes in the 1930s when he meets Papa Hemingway, who was doing a lot of fishing in those days in the Cuban waters. They strike up a friendship. They go fishing a lot on Hemingway's Pilar. And in 1935, Hemingway writes a monograph showing his work. And this is the cover. Through a lot of this time, Hemingway is whispering in Cotorno's ear, if you're ever going to be anything in the art world, you've got to get out of Cuba. And so this plays on Gaturno's mind, and in 1939, he pulls the trigger. Antonio Gaturno moves to New York. The problem is, not long after that, he decides he wants to go into surrealism. And his output, while brilliant, looks so much like that of Salvatore Dali, the art world essentially says, we've got one of these already, we don't need another. But he persists, so that when he passes in 1980, his house is filled with unsold work. But in the early 2000s, a guy by the name of Sean Poole marries into the family and discovers in his home in Cushnet, Massachusetts, which is a suburb of New Bedford, all these amazing paintings. And he decides he's gonna tell the world about this lost genius. And so in 2004, he releases a 240 page monograph filled with Gattorno's life's work. Beautiful stuff. Proud to have Antonio Gattorno's Portuguese Concidado. So that's Cuba 
And that's this time around. Till next time, thanks. Thanks.